be good at figuring out how to, how to send people stuff. Nope. Okay, so uh, uh, can you see that slide? I sure can. Oh, come on. It just uh, sent you the, this is the deck I use to teach marital classes and it's starting us at the beginning. We don't want to start at the beginning because we're not going to be here four days. There we go. Let's try it again. Uh, okay, are you looking at unit 10 options? Yep. Okay, so uh, I think a lot of people get hung up on options thinking there's a gazillion things going on. There is not. You know, contracts always have two parties, even outside the securities industry. Somebody who's paid the consideration, somebody who's received the consideration. So, Lauren, you did an opening purchase of tutoring. You established a long position. You have the choice, but not the obligation about what to do. Right? If you said, Dean, I don't want to do the hour today, I go, okay, fine. I did an opening sale on the tutoring. I collected your premium. And for that, I'm obliged. Right? If I didn't want to be obliged, that I shouldn't have collected your money. Mm -hmm. No, and that's how contracts work. Uh, we have two types of contracts, calls and puts. And you can either buy them and sell them. And they exist outside the securities industry as well. You know, for example, I was uh, thinking about buying this car on a win-issued basis. It doesn't exist yet. But, you know, I'm thinking, hey, you know, I want this thing. So I went to the car dealer and I said, listen, I'd like to give you $3,000. He says, what's the catch? There's some kind of catch. People give you money, there's some kind of catch. Mm -hmm. I said, for this $3,000, I want to have a choice to buy the first one of those cars off the boat from Japan for 25,000 bucks. He said, well, Dean Manufacturer suggested retail price is 24. I said, I understand that. And if I thought you would sell that to me for 24, I wouldn't be offering you $3,000 right now. And if it comes off the boat and you sell it to me at 24, I'm not going to exercise my contract I'm not going to call it away from you for 25. If I can buy it for 24, you just keep the money. He goes, hmm. He says, okay. Do I want something in written form from him? Absolutely. I, car dealer, agree to buy the said vehicle or sell the said vehicle for 25000 You know, several weeks later, they love that phraseology on the desk. Several weeks later, you know, I call these time clock questions or at expiration. You know, so several weeks later, he calls me. He says, hey, Dean, the car's here. It just came off the uh, boat from Japan. It's sitting here. I said, well, I'm on my way. He's in Long Beach, and I'm in San Francisco. He said, Dean, when you get here, I want to talk to you. I said, okay. Oh, I get there, Lauren. The thing is beautiful. You know, bright yellow. I call it my bumblebee. I still have it. It's in the garage. And anyways, mm -hmm. he said, Dean, I just had an offer for 32. You know, how about I give you five grand to go away? I go, well, gee, you must think I'm new. I mean... You just told me the car is worth 32. I have an option contract to call it away from you at 25. My contract is worth $7,000. Wait, and why? It's in the money. My okay. choice to buy the car at 25 when it's at 32 is worth seven. If I was going to walk, Mr. Car Dealer, I would want at least the intrinsic value, the amount of money. And I'd like some time value. It's taken me a lot of weeks. Now, in your case, unfortunately... I don't want to be cashed out of the option. I'm not going to let you offset your obligation. I'm not going to let you do a closing sale to get out of this thing. I'm the one who's long and I'm exercising. And so I bought the car at 25. I paid three to do so. So I'm out of pocket, break even 28, call up. Now in our time together, the underlying interest is not going to be an automobile. But if we're long the call, we paid a premium, we have a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. Now, we already know, even in my analogy, that when you buy something, the worst case is you're going to lose it, right? The worst case is you get nothing out of this hour session, in which case you wasted $225. So whenever you buy anything, the worst case is you lose your money. Mm -hmm. Now, the best case is when you collect money, you get to keep it. Now, outside of the securities industry, we also have put contracts. We also have book contracts. We're going to do gains and losses and all that stuff. This is a preface of where we're going in terms of these basic positions. You know, uh, I was getting ready to lease the automobile. It's a high-end automobile. 
And he told me, Dean, at the end of the lease, this car is going to be worth $60,000 or more. That's the residual value at the end of the lease. I go, really? You know, you and I have opposite expectations about the value of this car at the end of the lease. I think it's going to be worth less than 60, particularly since I'm the guy who is going to be driving it. I'd like to give you $4,000. Because what's the catch? You know, people don't give you money unless there's some kind of catch. I said, for this $4,000, I would like to have the choice to put the car to you at the end of the lease, a choice to sell the car to you at the end of the lease for 60. He goes, hmm. He goes, well, what if it's 60 or more? I go, well, I'm not going to stick it or put it to you at 60 if I can sell the car on the auto trader at, you know, 70 or 75. I'm only going to exercise this contract if it makes economic sense. He says, huh. Oh. He goes, I don't think I want to do that. I don't think he has, again, sincere then about the 60. But let's assume I could have Lauren got this car dealer to do this. Would I want something in written form from him? Absolutely. I, I car dealer, agreed to buy said vehicle at the end of the lease for $60,000. I give him the four. That's my premium. That's my opening purchase. And let's say that at the end of the lease, the car is 40. That's what the car is worth. He's sitting on his lot. He says, I wonder if Dean is going to show up today and make me perform on this contract. So he's short this put contract. He has an obligation to buy the car at 60. The car is 40. He says, I wonder if Dean's showing up today. The answer is yes. I am going to show up. I'm going to make him perform on the contract. Now, good news for him. This contract, Lauren, test question is European style. Meaning I couldn't just show up anytime and stick it to him. I could only stick it to him at the end of the what? Contract. Yeah. If it was American style, that means any day I could show up on his lot mm -hmm. and say, hey, where's my 60 G's? So anyways, uh, I stick it to him at 60. He goes, Dean, you're making me pay 60 for a car that's only worth 40? I go, yes. He goes, I'm going to lose 20 grand. I go, no, 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 no. You're only going to lose $16,000 because you get to keep the four. He goes, oh, man, you're so good at my loss. I go, yeah, well, it's not a, you know, uh, a coincidence. Your loss is my gain. You know, options are a zero-sum game. And what that means is for every winner, there's a loser. And once we get that, and then it's about half as much to learn, right? Whatever is good news for one party is going to be bad news for the other party. Now, in our time together, the underlying interest is not going to be an automobile. The underlying interest is going to be a stock or an index something like that, but the game is the same. So these are the option strategies you're held accountable for. Again, there's not a gazillion things going on. There are nine option strategies on your test. The vast majority of your questions, now we could expect a 20 plus or minus. Yeah, it depends on your draw. But uh, the vast majority, now by the way, the options are the only thing that kind of builds what I mean by that is if you're not very good at the basics, oh, you know, you're not going to be very good at the multiple option strategies. Almost everything else, Lauren, on your Series 7, it doesn't really matter if you're not very good at it because about 20 minutes later, there's some new area that you can redeem yourself with. You know, but that's not true in options. It's the only thing that kind of, you know, builds as you go up the ladder. And then the other one that's big time is this one, the covered call. So I'm not I saying these other ones aren't there. I'm just saying those are the vast calls and protective puts. Like that's where once it elaborates from the first four is when I. Well, I think that's why it. you see I put a line down here because they're different players. So, you know, that's part of our time together. What we're trying to do. So the two players we have, I don't know if it makes you feel better, but that's not something that you're not unique in that. Either people get the speculative strategies, and not the hedges so you either come to speculate or you come to hedge you come to speculate or you come to hedge now as a registered option principal i'm going to ask you lauren is the customer your customer you're asking me to approve them for options are they speculating or hedging you go i don't know and i go well, that's a bad answer yeah that's a bad so, answer. right so speculation means we don't give a damn about the stock we're just betting on the stock price that is what all we're doing is making a bet on the stock price. Now we may end up 
with the stock, but we don't start with the stock. You know, we either think the stock is going up or down or, you know, not going anywhere. And the difference with the hedges is we actually do have a stock position. And then it's very important to know we have two types of uh, positions we can have, right? The two positions we can have is long stock or short stock. So all the hedges questions. So very important. That's kind of the binary decision you got to do as a test taker. The first thing you want to do is look at your option question and say, okay, do they have a stock position? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then you know that you're over here, you know, on the left-hand side of this. If the answer is yes, then you know you're over here. And your point, the analysis is much, much different. Okay, so you uh, have been able, I'm so happy to articulate that where you get hung up is on the stock plus the uh, options. So do you feel pretty good about the basics? Because I'm asking as your tutor, do you want to build our way up to the hedges or do you want to just jump in to the hedges today? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Let's jump into the hedges. Okay. Then, um, yeah. We can always, if we need to make a retrograde movement, we can do it, <laughs> right? So, you know, sometimes we got to go backwards to go forwards. I think you'll probably see um, if I if I know it or not. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I like it. I like it. So these are all, you know, our speculative strategies. And no one's broken it down. At least, I don't know, maybe I just absorb it in different ways, you know, each time you're exposed to it. But that was a great explanation. Well, you know, it, it's, well, be careful too. The challenge you also have I mean, I'm very proud that you're, you know, you were willing to invest in yourself, but you know, the, the downside is where you can have a lot of different voices. And so uh, the way I always say, Lauren, it's a buffet, take what you like, leave what you don't know. Good news. Uh, if you're not quite sure you can articulate however you've been told before, and I can elaborate on how that fits in with what I'm saying or how it doesn't fit in with what I'm saying. And uh, you know, the key point and, and good news though, you're, you're making the effort. I had a young lady who, so willful, which I so respect that she's that willful. But she said, Dean, I have my own method. Hmm. I said, okay, well, as long as you're getting right answers. But then I had to tell her, I said, her, her name's Chrissy. I said, Chrissy, I, you know, I don't know how to tell you this, but your method doesn't work. You're not getting right answers. And so, <laughs> you know, you need either a new method, whether it's mine or some other method, you got to come up with a, a way of, you know, getting the right answers. You know? mm -hmm. So, as I said, the first thing you want to recognize is that you have a stock position. That's really, really key to getting this right. And the second thing is to say, okay, the stock is always going to be dominant. We always let the stock position control. You can't let the option tail wag the stock dog. You know, a hedge is a fence. It keeps good things in and bad things out. You know, Lauren, I'm now in Las Vegas and you know, my mom is retired and I take care of mom. She lives with me here in Las Vegas. But in California, before I retired, I had a mountain place and I had a city place. And I left mom in the mountain place when I wouldn't have to go into the city to work and was commuting. And, you know, there's a fence around the place. And, you know, sometimes mom would get a little nervous. But I said, listen, I said, that's why you got Yogi. You know, when you pull up to the gate, there's a sign that says there's a Wattweiler that lives here. You know, it doesn't say he's aggressive or not, but, you know, Mm -hmm. I said, Mom, uh, he's a hedge. He keeps good things in and bad things out. I, I think there are softer targets here. I mean, if I were something there up to no good, I don't think I want to roll up on a driveway where it's been very clear there's a big dog. <laughs> you, know, mm -hmm. you know, one time somebody rolled up on the driveway and he went nuts and, you know, they said, oh, man, your dog is upset. I said, he doesn't like people to sneak up. And you're in the country and you're pulling up a road. You should honk your horn and announce yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise people think, why are you rolling up on my driveway? And, you know, stealth mode. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we're either going to be protecting a long stock position. So it's about fear, right? It's insurance. You don't buy insurance because you're going to wreck. You buy the insurance just in case. You know, I had a little fender bender and I got out of the car. First thing I said to this young man was, hey, no worries. I'm properly insured. This is not a problem. My insurance company, I paid them a premium. I paid them a premium 
for a contract. You know, they didn't want to be contractually obliged. They shouldn't have collected my premium. And they said, if something like this happens, they're going to take care of it for me. Well, that's why I'm paying them the premium, right? So good news, I'm not naked. I'm not naked. I'm covered. I actually have this insurance policy. Now, insurance is going to cost us some money. So we're either going to buy insurance to protect our long stock position, or we're going to try and generate some additional income. And if we're doing income, we're going to sell the options. So we're doing stock plus options. Okay, so we said as a test taker, so here's our test phraseology. We said as a test taker, the first thing you want to do is say, ah, this is a stock position. And once you get that, that's what's going to dominate this. So I can immediately say, this is a bullish position because the stock dominates. The stock dominates. And that's where a lot of people get hung up. You know, they get hung up because they're looking at this and that's not what's driving the transaction. You know, so they say, oh, the break-even is 32 and I'm bearish. No, if you just bought that put, that would be true. Now, again, it's a buffet, but what I like to do is when I get this phraseology, your customer buys 100 shares of ABC at 40. I always like to underneath the option contract, say, okay, what am I looking at here? Particularly puts, what are the contract specifications? If you can get good at contract specifications, in other words, you're not fumbling around that that's a choice to sell the stock. And that's what I told you I would do as a test taker is I like to put underneath that contract that what I'm looking at is a choice to sell the stock I own at the strike price. And that's a pretty nifty thing to be able to do. You know, I sleep a little better knowing that besides owning the stock position, I also have a choice to sell it at the strike price. I'm buying insurance on the stock position. Now, this is the one time and the one time only that I'm not subtracting to get the break even. Well, I'll test it, put down, call up, put down. True if it's a speculative position. Now, if you don't want to memorize a bunch of stuff, so there's two ways to proceed. I'm going to show you both. I would tell you, Lauren, if you go down the memory road, the stuff that you're going to have to memorize is going to compound. Whereas if you understand contract specifications and you can track money in or out of the account, you won't have to memorize anything and you'll get hundred percent on options. Second point, break even is always expressed as a per share number. And so we're gonna do this as a per share number. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with a T and I'm gonna show you how to memorize it. So let's start with buying hundred shares at 40. When we buy 100 shares at 40, when we buy 100 shares at 40, is that money out or is that money in? It's out. Now, I don't typically, again, this is Justine, I don't use minus signs. I'm using them here because you might have learned this with pluses and minuses. I don't usually use those because it's easy to transpose them, right? And then there you could get in some mess pretty quick. All right, so now we got that part. We buy an ABC 35 put at three. Is that money out or money in when we out. buy a put? Out. That's money out. So I'm net out of pocket 43. So one thing I can do is I can just say to myself as a test taker, I can shop the answer set and say, okay, I need a number that if I plug it in here would make the columns balance because that's what break even is. Same dollars out as dollars in. So perhaps I ch shop my answer set. You know, I think of the answer set as offers made to me. You know, they say, here are some offers. Would you like to accept one of these offers as the bank even in this transaction? And one thing I can do is say, well, let me just plug that in and see if it would indeed make the columns balance. Yeah. So that's the break even. Now, the other way I could proceed as I said, we can memorize. And we want to memorize, it's going to be the stock cost. By the way, this is the one time and the one time only. And that's why I told you not to feel bad about struggling with puts. 
because lots of people do. It's the one time and the one time only we have a put and we're actually adding to get the break even. And the reason we're adding is because this is not an option position. Remember, what do we say this position is? It is a what? Stock position. A stock position. The stock dominates. And so you can memorize that the stock cost plus the premium equals the break even. And it's again, the one time and the one time only that this is going to be true because this is not, this is not an option position. So if you want to memorize this, you can do so. And that would be 43 is our break even. So we can either put that there. Nobody has things to break even, by the way. All right, so let's put that there as our break even. And as we said, if you want to memorize that, you can simply memorize. I just warned you though, if you memorize stuff, it becomes a lot of stuff. Yeah. So if you want, you can just memorize stock cost, stock cost plus premium. And remember, it's the only time it's not put down. And so that's why that's important when we go back to that little thing we were looking at. And you said, Dean, I struggle when they're stock. And the reason most people struggle with it stock is because again, when it's a stock, it's not gonna be put down. It's the one time and the one time only that we have a put and we're actually adding to get the break even, right? Because we're out for the stock and we're out for the protection. So this is true when we are doing any hedging, it's that's gonna right. be this break, okay. Yeah, that's right. When you're, uh, when you're doing the hedging, when you have a, let's say what hedging is, when you have a stock position, it's the opposite of what you would do if it's not. So it's not going to be call up. It's going to be put down. And it's going to be the stock less. So it's it's it goes. So, you know, that's where people, you know, again, I'm not, I get more more Lauren, Lauren, when somebody's confused in some way I've never seen before. Right? <laughs> I'm like, you know, so you're that, I don't know if that makes you feel better, but that's a common thing that people struggle with. By the way, it's either, it's either the other way too, Lauren. Sometimes people get the edges and not the speculative, right? So, you know, they usually get, you know, there's just two players, right? You know, what are you coming to do? What are you coming to the options market to do? I love teaching. Who knows if I'll ever, ever get to teach it again in a live setting, but I used to love to teach commodity series three. And I used to love to teach it in uh, Denver and Minnesota. And we'd, I'd be on the ground floor a lot of times and I could see the people pulling up and it was so fun to watch the people pull up. Some of the people pull up in pickup trucks and cowboy hats and boots and lunch boxes. And, you know, they actually got through milking some things earlier in the morning and they actually have soybeans and pork bellies. The other guys show up in Porsches and pinky rings and gold chains. You know, uh, there are speculators. Those are the guys in the Porsches and the pinky rings and they want to know where the most expensive place is. And then the guys in the pickup trucks are trying to edge. They're different players, certainly. They mm -hmm. even sit on different sides of the room. By the way, the guys in the pickup trucks have more money. You know, so you know, I had one guy and I was kind of laughing at him. He goes, what are you laughing at? And I said, I think you're pretend hokey. I think you have a lot of money and you're pretending that you don't. And he goes, well, mm -hmm. Dean, if you're a whale, you know, the way not to get harpooned is not to surface. So, you know, he's kind of confirming that I'm right, that he probably owns the whole town and nobody knows that he does, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so nobody does things to break even. Nobody does things to break even. So we got to get comfortable with two phraseologies here. So we've done what I call, Lauren, our initial setup. I have three T's here. I'm not going to use three on the real test, but what I'm using the T for is to track money in and out. And so the three things that can happen is the option contract can be traded, the option contract can be exercised, or the options contract can expire. I think a good way to remember these three things is with a mnemonic or memory aid T. So what I'm suggesting, Lauren, is they're going to do something like several weeks later at expiration. And so we want to look now at what happens if we trade the option or the option expires, all that. Now, our setup is the same. So what I mean by that is we're not going to change our initial setup. Our initial setup, now again, our time together is a buffet. And I am not going to put $4,300 there because I think that's kind of a mental mess. 
So I believe in doing things on a per share basis. And then when we're all done, just remind ourselves we're discussing 100 shares because that's just easier. Otherwise you have all these zeros floating around. And so again, I'm not going to put 300 in there, right? So my setup's gonna be the same. I say I'm out 40 for the stock. I'm out three points for the protection. So I'm out a total of 43. So that's my initial setup. Almost all options are gonna require us to do two setups. An initial setup, an initial setup, and then a mark to market. An initial setup, and then a mark to market. Okay, okay so uh, here's our initial setup. So uh, what we're looking for is, I, I, we don't really do this for the max game, but again, we're looking for the number that's over here in terms of the offset. And anything above 43, we're going to be a winner. And how far above 43 could the A, B, C, B? How far above 43? Um, it, unlimited, right? Yeah, there is no there is no ceiling, right? So this has test question on limited gain potential. Now I just want to show you. So let's put that in there and then let's just do a closeout and see what it looks like. So let's put uh, unlimited as our gain potential. And as I said, we don't really do hedging because of the gain. Where the point here is we're not trying to take care of the gain. When we're hedging, we're trying to take care of the loss potential. So that's why I'm saying this isn't really driving the transaction. What's driving the transaction is putting in the loss. There's no ceiling. I think of options as being about a floor and a ceiling. And so what we did is we did construction and we put in a floor at 35. We didn't put in a ceiling. We can still sell the stock for whatever we'd like. All right, so let's use some Texas phraseology. You know, it's like learning a foreign language. They say when you dream the foreign language, that's when you know it. So when you have your first uh, dream on this. So the test phrase only goes like this. Your customer buys 100 shares of ABC at 40 and buys one ABC September 35 put at three. At expiration, at expiration, the stock is 50. So are we happy or are we sad if at expiration the stock is 50? Um... Are we happy or sad? We're happy and we probably didn't. Oh, yeah, we guess. Oh, yeah, I did, Lauren. Aren't you a jerk of a customer? You're absolutely right. Happy, but like, we, well, did we didn't need the production, man. If we just bought the stock at 40 and it's at 50, we would have made 10, but now we only make seven. I say, Lauren, yeah, that's kind of like telling me we wasted our money on the insurance because we didn't wreck, right? We don't need the protection if the stock is 35 or higher. Mm hmm. The protection is about the floor, not the ceiling. So you're correct. By the way, 50 is bueno, but it could have been 55, could have been 60. By the way, here on the test, you would tell me that we made seven points, right? So if you go good to the T, I say at expiration, the stock's at 50 and you offset or you close out or, you know, like you can get a word salad is my point. You can have a, you know, a paragraph and trying to figure it out. Now, ultimately what you want to do is if you can net the numbers, right? You know, you can net the numbers. You could just figure this out by netting that up and saying, okay, well, what's the difference? Now, remember, this is seven points, but that's $700. So they won't give you both, right? They'll give you one or the other. So if it was 200 shares, it would be $1,400. So I would suggest we do it on a per share basis. And then we're all done. Now, I don't know if you don't want to use a T. As I said, I'm a big believer in using a T. But why let me show you something. Even if you're not using the T, the process is some version of the T. What I mean by that is if you're using pluses and minuses, it would be the same thing, right? I'm out minus 40, minus three, plus 50. You net all those numbers up and it's going to be that seven points. Now, as we said, we don't do this for the gain. The gain is unlimited because as we said, this could be any number that goes in here. And as we said, we didn't put in a ceiling. Mm -hmm. Let's just put that in there and then let's put a smaller, smaller font. That's too small. 
just right. Is that as I no I before C I before E except after C is that the rule? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, terrible spelling and math is not my thing, right? Okay, so now we're at the point of why we did this. So this is pretty cool. You know, if I'm your registered option principal, and I say, what is your customer doing? And you're saying, Dean, my customer wants to have the ability to participate and a big price increase, but not participate in a big price decline. I say, smart customer. You said, so I say, Lauren, you're telling me your customer wants to buy puts on stocks that he owns. Smart customer. So let's first put in why we're going to do what we are doing here. Did you catch the suitability? What we're doing here is creating the ability to participate in a big price increase. Again, because there's no ceiling. But not participate in a big price decline. And that's pretty bueno. You know, getting a customer approved to buy puts on stocks that he own is very easy because, mm -hmm. you know, registered option principals love this idea that what you're coming to the options market to do is offset risk. Now, remember, we're still bullish on the stock. We said the stock dominates. So, right, we're bullish. But when we're hedging, it's a fear. You know, I joke, insurance agents sell fear and stockbrokers sell greed. Insurance mm -hmm. agents say, wouldn't life be terrible, Lauren, if... Wouldn't life be terrible if ABC goes below 35? You know, the stock market is so great. Hey, Lauren, wouldn't it be great if this thing triples? Right. So now if we're going to buy insurance, it's going to cost money. And so again, the setup is always the same. You know, this is not changing. We're out 40, 40 for the stock. By the way, if we just did that, we would have unlimited gain. But you know, if we don't hedge this thing, if we don't hedge this stock position, the loss is $40. Uh, the way I think of it is we could fall down 40 flights of stairs. That's painful. You know, so we say, we don't want to fall down 40 flights of stairs. So let's do some construction and let's put in a floor at 35. Let's put in a floor at 35. That way we don't fall down so many flights. You know, we're still a loser, but you know, <laughs> we're less of a loser. Hurts less, yeah. I mean, you know, losers are losers, but you know, there's a way to be a smart loser and you know, not so smart a loser, right? So there's our floor, and remember that that construction costs us money, so that's what we had to do. So where is money? So boom, and okay, so here we go. So that was our initial setup. Remember, the initial setup is based on that first sentence in the question. So your customer buys 100 shares of ABC. We said, Lauren, as a test taker, the minute we say buy 100 shares of ABC, you got to say stock. You say, okay, I'm long the stock, so I'm bullish. I'm not going to let the option tail wag the stock dog. You know, the contract still is the same. It still means when you buy a put. Do you have a choice to sell the stock? That hasn't changed. But there's a huge difference in having a choice to sell stock you do own and having a choice to sell stock you do not own. A choice to sell stock you do not own is a speculative position and you're betting on a declining stock price. Having a choice to sell stock you do own is a hedge. An entirely different player, right? So what kind of player are we? Okay, so let's do our test phraseology. The key point here is to recognize it doesn't matter if I give you a market price below 35. Because, you know, we're if we have this choice to sell our stock at 35, we're not going to sell it in the open market if we can stick it to somebody at 35. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's always our offset. The other reason I like the T, by the way, is the T is kind of helpful in pointing us to the right direction in the question. In other words, I know that this is an offset at 40. If I bought it 
I know that I'm going to end up selling it at some point in terms of the, you know, the op, what we call the offset. So that's the other reason I'm a fan of the T. All right, so let's uh, do this test phraseology. A customer buys 100 shares of ABC at 40 and buys one ABC September 35 put at three. At expiration, at expiration, the stock is 32. Now, one thing you got to recognize as a test taker is that we're not going to put 32 you know, over here, right? Because why would we sell it at 32 when we're sitting on a choice to sell it at what? 35. Yeah, so we're going to exercise our put. Now, by the way, Lauren, even if you didn't do that, I would do it for you. As your broker, I'd say, well, why wouldn't you want me to do that? Mm -hmm. So options are going to get automatically exercised, automatically exercised if they have intrinsic value. So anywhere below 35, this contract is going to get exercised. And so that means in no circumstance, in no circumstance, this is bueno, are we going to be selling this stock for anything less than 35? That is our floor. That is our floor. There's no way we're going to be able to get anything less. You mentioned that, that they automatically exercise if it has yeah. intrinsic value. Yeah, it's in your option agreement that we're going to have limited discretion, limited discretion to close out options if they're in so, the money. So if I went on a vacation, I forgot about my option position, it's expiring and how often does the agent need to check that or when do they? No, it just, you know, if, by the way, if you get mad, I'm going to say, well, Aaron, why are you, or Lauren, why are you mad at me? I mean, and then I'm going to say, Lauren, you obviously said you read the option agreement and you must have not have because it's in there. Right, we tell you that if we haven't heard from you, you're on vacation or whatever, we're going to automatically exercise. So the moment that it the stock price goes to 34, then, then it gets exercised? No, no, only at expiration. At expiration. Well, only at expiration, right? Otherwise, you have, to you have to tell me. But what we're illustrating here, and again, I said, if you don't, if you're not good at contract specifications, and you go down the memory road, I warned you that the things you're going to have to memorize is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And so what we're looking at here now is what's called the max loss. And so the max loss is going to be my break even. By way of review, how did we get the break even? We either memorized, we either memorized that it was the stock cost plus the premium, right? I'm now showing you the maximum loss. It's the break even to the strike. You would tell me the maximum loss here is eight points or $800. The break even to the strike. It doesn't get any worse than that. So that's pretty cool, right? Because remember, without the hedge, you could lose how much? $40, right? Without the hedge, the stock goes to zero, you lose 40 points. But here, the most we're going to lose is the break even to the strike. That is our max loss. And again, we still have unlimited gain. So that's kind of cool, right? We still have unlimited gain. We just capped our loss. So how can I identify that this is a protective put? Well, the way you do that, as we said, the first thing you got to do is you have to get good at this part right here and then test point or the question. Your mouth. You know that it's either going to be a covered call or protected put because you know that when you buy the stock, what you want to be able to do is sell the stock. Mm -hmm. And so that means you know that what's coming next is either a choice to sell the stock Right? It's either going to be a long put or a short call because you're going to either be interested in, boom. So you know this is going to be a protective put based on owning the stock. Right? So there's going to be two things. Let me just show that to you. Let me clean this up. I want to show you. There's our answer set and there's our protection, right? 
So you know that if you own the stock and your interest protection, you should be able to get this to a 50-50 pretty quickly. Because when you hear with the protection, you know it's either going to be A or C. Because protection is going to cost you money. Now you say, okay, I'm long the stock. So I want a choice to sell the stock. And so you would say, okay, that's going to be a long put to protect that stock. So the recognition is what are you trying to accomplish? So in this example, what we're trying to accomplish is protecting the stock position. So two things as a test taker that get, get you there. This and then saying, oh, I got a put, but I own the stock. Mm -hmm. And so I say, okay, what's really dominating here is this. And that's the biggest thing people get hung up on, right? Because uh, let me just show you, <laughs> again, this is about where most people get hung up. And again, you know, it's, it's, I'm not trying to be negative, but people don't pay attention to the stock, right? And then this is an entirely different thing. Mm -hmm. This would be my break even would be 32. My uh, I'm bearish. My max loss is $300. My max gain is uh, $3,200. When it goes break even to zero, that's an entirely different thing. Yep. And that's not what's going on here. You know, what's going on here is the, buying that stock. And so once you buy the stock as a test taker, you say, okay, I'm either going to be interested in having a choice to sell the stock or an obligation to sell the stock. In other words, we know that when we've done this, that we're gonna to want to be able to either have a choice to sell the stock, which is the long put, or we're gonna want an obligation to sell. So there's only two contracts that would work, right? Two positions. So we know that before we do the reveal, this is either going to be buying a put or selling a call. It's either going to be a covered call or a protective put, even before I do the reveal, right? So let's just try it again. So even before I do the reveal, so here's our next one we're going to look at. By the way, it's usually a page off. So in that document I sent you, it says page 104. If you go there, you'll see this, this T if you want to fill in your, you know, when you print the stuff and fill it in, this would be it. And if it, depending on your edition, I sent you, really, it might be 103 or 105, but you know, it's, it's in that general neighborhood. Okay. So here's our next one. And before we do anything, before I do the reveal, are you bullish or bearish? Is this a bullish or a bearish position? We are bullish. Yeah. Because remember the stock dominates. So it doesn't matter what that option position is. Doesn't matter. If you buy the stock, you are bullish. Now I say, okay, what are we interested in doing, Lauren? Are we interested in generating additional income? Suitability. I say, this sounds pretty bueno. Lauren, how would you like to get paid several hundred dollars in advance? To agree to sell stock high, you just bought low. Somebody will pay you hundreds of dollars to agree to sell high stock you just bought low. In fact, you can use that money to lower your out-of-pocket cost on the stock because right now, just buying the stock, you're out 40 points. Sounds good. Yeah. In fact, there's three sources of profit. There's three ways for you to make money. One way, Lauren, to make money is the difference between the 40 and the strike price. Another way to make money is from the premium we're going to collect. And then any dividends along the way are going to be yours as well. So even if the stock doesn't go anywhere, you know, you're going to make money. He said, well, let's do it. I say, okay. So what we're about to do now is a covered call, also known as a buy right. Now, Lauren, your point, test point, it was a good one, is you have to be able to identify the position because not only is it testable, it is. Not only is it testable, it is. If you can't identify your point, you don't know what to do next. Now, I would tell you that one thing you should do is fire up a T. You can never go wrong by firing up a T. <laughs> and say, okay, I'm going to try and track some money in and out. Now, remember the other thing I said that I would want you to do is I'd like you to be able to, before you do anything and jump in, say, okay, what am I looking at in terms of contract specification? What I mean by contract specification 
is underneath the uh, option leg, not test what's called a leg. I like to write, what am I looking at? And what I'm looking at here is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. You know, if I didn't want to sell that stock at the strike price, I shouldn't have collected the money. So that's what I like to do before I do anything that's kind of get comfortable. Now, by the way, you got to be real careful here. Again, a lot of test takers get all messed up because they're looking at that. And that's not what's going on. You can't let that option tail wag with the stock dog. You know, the tail is seven, the tail is seven mm -hmm. and the stock is 40. So if you're trying to decide what somebody's up to, where is the most money? The money's in the 40, right? So now we're going to do our initial setup. Remember how we do our initial setup? We're going to track the money in and out. Question. When you say obligation to sell the stock at the strike price, mm -hmm. the strike price is 45? That's exactly right. In fact, let's just put that there. We got a ceiling, a ceiling at 45. Options are all about floors and the ceiling is not testable. What Dean thinks is not testable. But, well, I was telling you about Chrissy, that willful young lady. I told you, I, I really do respect people that are that willful. But, you know, she said, I don't want to do it that way. I go, okay, fine. I mean, <laughs> whatever your attack plan is. So I like to think what just what you did say, yeah, we have an obligation to sell that way north of where I'm at right now with you. But the bad news here is we're not going to participate past the strike. You know, we're going to have to give up the stock at 45. So way north of where we're at right now, Lauren, but the more bullish we are, the higher the strike will write. And the less bullish we are, the lower the strike we're going to write. Because we're going to have an obligation to give up the stock at 45. But that's okay. It sound, I still think it sounds way enough, Lauren. We're going to agree to give up at 45 stock we bought at 40. Somebody is giving us $700 to agree to sell to them stock at 45 that we just bought at 40. All right, so let's just do our setup. We're always going to have to do a setup. All right, so is that forty dollars out or dollars in? Out. Oh. That's right. That's dollars out. Let's put that in there. And break even is always expressed on a per share basis, and so I'm not going to put four thousand dollars in it because that's not how we express break evens. Now, as I told you, this is where most people get hung up. This is the one time and the one time only. It ain't call up. This is the one time we have a call and we're actually going to be subtracting to get the break even. And so is that $7 out or dollars in? In. Now, as I said, one thing you can do if you get good at the T is you can shop your answer set and look at what's being offered to you as a break even. And you know that it's a number that if you plug it in there, would make the columns balance because that's what break even is. Same dollars out as what? Dollars in. Dollars in. Now, if you don't get that, then you can memorize. I told you, if you're going to memorize stuff, the stuff you have to memorize is going to continue to kick them out. But this is the one time and the one time only. It's not going to be call up. It's going to be the stock cost. We're out $40 for the stock less the premium. The stock cost less the premium. Because again, this is a not an option position. This is a stock position. And so when we do that, we're going to get our break even. All right, so we're out of the stock. We're out 40 for the stock. We brought in seven points for the option. And so our break even is 33. Is this, this is also a hedging position. Yeah, we call this one. Yeah, this one, as I told you, I'm so with you that this is kind of uh, where people get up. This is considered a partial hedge. Because we didn't move the floor. The floor is still zero. We're just closer to it. 
So this is what we call a partial edge. We, our hedge for seven points here, we, we would have lost money anywhere below 40, but now Lauren, we don't lose money until it goes below 33. So the reason it's a partial edge is because we don't have a choice. So, you know, sometimes, you know, we said, do you want an effective hedge or do you want a partial edge? That's a partial hedge because you have an obligation. You want to be fully protected. Here, you're partially protected, seven points. Still considered a hedge, though, in terms of organization. But, you you know, it's not a full hedge. Okay. You don't really do this for the hedge. You do this, as I said, not so much for the hedge, uh, those seven points. The test question here is you do this to generate income. Income. That's the test question here. Uh, and then remember, this is, again, the one time and the one time only, it ain't call up. If you, any other time you would encounter a call, whether it's a long call, short call, credit call spread, debit call spread, it would be call up. But your point, because it's a hedge, it's the opposite, right? It's plus minus. It's minus plus, plus plus. Last time it was plus plus or minus minus, right? Minus 40, minus three, minus 43. Here it's minus plus, minus 40 plus seven, right? So that's what's going on. Any question on that break in here before we do the max gain? Well, you actually kind of walked your way into the max gain when you brought up that ceiling. We don't participate past the strike, right? So that is what we paid for the stock. We brought in for the option seven points. And again, I don't use pluses minus, but some people do. So I'm just using those because it's very easy to transpose them, but for our purposes. So uh, you brought up this idea that we're not going to participate past 45. So that's the bad part here. We're not going to participate past that. The most we're going to get for the stock is 45. Yeah. Now, again, what a mess. So now you can simply net these two if you'd like and tell me the max gain test question is uh, 12 points. That's one way to proceed. That is one way to proceed. So let's just do that. We don't participate past the strike price. Now, another way we said, if you don't understand stuff, what was the other way we could proceed? We can memorize stuff. Yeah. And what I warned you about memorizing stuff. Build. Down the memory road. So the other way you could do this is you could memorize that the maximum gain in a covered call is the break even to the strike price. Right? So that's another way you could do that. You can memorize. If we're going to do it that way, we'd say, okay, well, we're net out of pocket 33. We're what? net out of pocket 33. Right. And we have to sell the stock at 45. So that's another way to get that 12 point gain. So, two ways to present you can memorize that the maximum gain is the break even 33 to the strike price 45. Or you can just net the T's out and say, okay, I have to sell the stock at 45, but it's 12 points or $1,200. Mm -hmm. Well, we can do, we're gonna do another one. We can do another one. So max loss, this as we said, yeah. Is it like, it just doesn't feel as straightforward as the last one. It's not, it is not as straightforward. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Like protective put is straightforward. You buy the stock and you buy the option. Here, you're buying the stock and you're selling the option, right? So you you have to net the numbers and then do it. Let's try it. Let's uh, get the max loss here. The max loss is the break-even 33, right? The worst case is the stock goes to zero and then we'll try one. So here we paid 40. We brought in seven. Stock goes to zero and we lose it. So as I said, we fall down 33 flights of stairs. Okay, let's try a couple of questions here. And again, it just comes from practice, drilling, and rehearsing. So if we want protection, we're going to buy the put, right? And if we want income, we're going to what? Sell the put. Sell the call, right? Sell the calls, covered call. 
So if we're generating income on a stock position, it's going to be B. All right, let's try one. Let's, here's our hedges. Here's the one we're working on. These are the two we did today in today's session. We did long the stock. And we said there's an effective hedge and there's a what? Partial. The effective hedge is to buy a put. The partial hedge is to sell a call, right? So are you into income or protection, right? If you're into income, it's sell a call. If you're into protection, buy a what? Buy a put, right? So those are our two. Let's try an uh, example. Let me, I'm just going to find us some practice questions here real quick. As you can see, we got lots of options stuff. Uh, remember, you, we jumped right into the hedges because you said you felt pretty good about the basics. And I feel as your tutor, you did pretty good. Uh, I think better than I would expect for people who uh, purchased tutoring. So you, but you've had other tutoring. You've seen, like, you know, so you've done some work already. A lot of Just work. Just getting to the questions and practice questions here real quick. I have a hard close. Usually I don't have a hard close. So on Mondays, we don't have a hard close. I don't mind running over. But when I have a hard close, there's another session right behind you. I got to be a little more aggressive in our- You said today you do have a hard close? Yeah. All okay. right, so- Let's Since try. it's three thirty, can we actually just ask you a quick question about oh, captain? Absolutely, absolutely. I know our time's coming up. Um, I clicked on that link and I didn't find a separate question bank offered. I okay, only... well, let me find the actual link with the, that and I'll send it to you. Okay, because I only saw like the package. Okay, I'll, I'll find that for you and link it to you. Here's a question for you to demonstrate your browse. If your customer owns a hundred shares of stocks and wants to participate. In a big price increase, but not participate in a big price decline, you would recommend um buying puts. Yeah, be with confidence, confidence buying. protection. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Awesome. Okay, let's uh. Here we go. A customer owns 100 shares of stock and wishes to generate additional income on that stock. What option strategy would you recommend? Mm, selling covered calls? Absolutely. Say with confidence. Selling yes. covered calls. Right on. Right on. And uh, what we didn't talk about is how to hedge a short stock position. So we can do that next time. Okay. Okay. And, we'll and then uh, you Friday. have it recorded. Uh, and again, that will should match up with the document I sent you, and I will send you the link for the Kaplan QBAC, which is nice because then you can send me QIDs. Anything else today before I start my next session? Let's see, Monday is when are we going again? Are we going this week or Friday? Uh, I don't think I have a hard close on Friday. So, you know, it, what I mean by that is if we're in the middle of something, we will finish it up. Uh, okay. You know, if there's not a hard close. So, let me just see what's going on Friday. And then should I schedule another appointment for next week? Yeah, think about think about before you schedule your next appointment. I think this session you did was excellent. So cool. I'll make you a deal. And the deal, it's whatever you're comfortable with. You have the recording, not me. Mm -hmm. but if you want, I'm willing to trade you an hour of tutoring for that video. Because oh, then sure. I, and then I can post it for other people who are struggling because not everybody has the money to do it. But that's completely yeah. up to you. And then yeah. it would be same deal. If it's, uh, you know, if we, then you book an hour. And if I like the session, then I, I'll make the offer. If I don't like the session, either <laughs> I didn't do well or you didn't do well, then I don't make the offer. <laughs> you know, so, okay. Yeah. But okay. for now, um, for now, book it because I, otherwise, you know, otherwise it won't block out on my calendar. Sure. So just okay. book that. And then, when you know, remind me on that hour that, hey, Dean, I want to claim my free offer. And then wow. I'll, before we leave, I'll, I'll, I'll schedule it on the regular Zoom. Well, okay. I'll you get to the next one. Look forward to Friday. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I'll see you Friday. And like I say, it doesn't look like at this point, there's a hard close. So we won't have to run so quickly. Awesome. Okay. I enjoyed it. I think you did really well. So your tutor, I'm pretty honest, very pleased with your performance. We'll pick it up with hedging short stock positions, but the big ones are the two we did. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.